Okay, get this. What if we could control magnets with light? With light. Yeah, with light. Sounds crazy, right? Yeah. But that's exactly what scientists are starting to do. And that's what we're going to be diving deep into today. Awesome. Um, we've got a scientific paper all about this breakthrough. And it centers around something called terahertz radiation, which is a type of light we can't even see. So not just strengthening existing magnetism, yeah. but creating it. Exactly. It's like switching magnetism on and off of the light switch. The material they're using is called FPS3. And it's got a unique magnetic personality. It's what's known as an antiferromagnet. Meaning? Well, in simple terms, that means its electron spins are arranged in a perfectly balanced way. For every spin pointing up, there's another pointing down. So they cancel each other out. Oh, I see. Right, so no overall magnetization. Think of it like a perfectly choreographed dance. But instead of dancers, we have electron spins all paired up, resulting in a kind of magnetic stalemate. But here's where it gets really interesting. Scientists found that when they brought FPS3 close to its critical temperature, think of it as a tipping point, Okay. things changed dramatically. Near this critical temperature, the material's magnetic order gets shaky, incredibly sensitive to any outside influence like a pencil balanced on its tip, slightest nudge, and it topples over. Okay, so we've got this material on the verge of a magnetic shift. What happens when scientists hit it with terahertz pulses near this critical point? Well, they discovered something remarkable. They could actually induce magnetization, those perfectly balanced spins, flipped, some of them at least, yeah. out of their usual arrangement. And the kicker is, yeah. this new magnetic state, the one they induced with light, it can last far longer than anyone expected. So it's not simply about flipping those spins. It's yeah. about making that flip state stick around, which is a big deal. But how does light even create magnetism? It's not like those terahertz pulses are directly interacting with the electron spins themselves. Right. It's more indirect. This is where the concept of phonons comes in. Think of them as tiny vibrations in the material's lattice structure. Like, imagine the atoms in the material as tiny balls connected by springs. Okay, so the terahertz light sets those springs vibrating. Exactly. But it's not just random jiggling, is it? No, it's very specific. Yeah. The light sets those springs vibrating at a precise frequency. And those vibrations, those phonons, are what ultimately influence the magnetic behavior. Okay, so we've got our terahertz light acting like a tiny hammer, tapping on very specific vibrations within the material. And it turns out there's one particular phonon vibrating at 3.27 terahertz. That's the star of the show. This specific vibration has a special connection to both the magnetic properties and the terahertz light. It's like the key mediator in this whole process. It's almost as though this 3.27 terahertz phonon is a tiny antenna perfectly tuned to receive the terahertz signal and translate it into a magnetic response. So that tapping sets off a chain reaction and boom, we get magnetization. This seemingly simple act of light hitting a material can create a lasting change in its magnetic properties. It's incredible. But wouldn't the presence of magnetic domains regions with spins pointing in different directions mess things up? That's a good question. You'd think those domains would create chaos, disrupt the induced magnetization. But the researchers found that, remarkably, the induced magnetization is surprisingly insensitive to domain formation. It cuts through the noise. So this terahertz-induced magnetization has a superpower, allowing it to establish a clear magnetic signal despite any potential disruptions. This is where things get really exciting. What does this all mean? Why should our listener care about terahertz-induced magnetization? Well, this discovery is potentially a game changer because it provides a new way to control magnetism using light. And not just any control, a much faster, more energy-efficient method than what we currently have. Think about all the devices we use every day that rely on magnets, hard drives, sensors, motors, the list goes on. If we can manipulate magnetism using light, we could revolutionize these technologies, make them faster, smaller, and much more powerful. Imagine being able to write data to a hard drive using ultra-fast pulses of light, or developing magnetic sensors with incredible sensitivity and speed. The possibilities are truly mind-boggling. And that's just the beginning. But to really grasp the potential here, we need to dive a bit deeper into the science behind this phenomenon. Amazing how such a tiny thing of vibration is so crucial in this whole dance of magnetism and light. It really is. It makes you realize that there's this whole universe happening at a scale we can't even see. And it's driving these massive effects. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go back to these phonons. We've talked about them as vibrations, but what are they really? Well, you can think of them as these tiny packets of energy that travel through the material's lattice structure the way the atoms are arranged. They're not actual particles like electrons, but they behave like them in many ways. Okay, so 
like little bundles of energy. Yeah. We talked about this analogy of atoms being like tiny balls connected by springs. And the terahertz light is setting those springs vibrating. So those vibrations, those are the phonons. Exactly. And just like waves of light can be described as particles called photons, those waves of vibrations in the lattice can be described as these quasi-particles, these phonons. Okay, I think I'm getting that. So we have these phonons zipping around in the crystal lattice, carrying energy. But how do they actually influence the electron spins? How do those vibrations make a material magnetic? That's the key question, and that's what makes this discovery so interesting. You see, in certain materials like FPS3, there's a strong connection, a coupling between those phonons and the electron spins. It all comes down to the fact that the magnetic interactions between atoms, well, they depend on their positions relative to one another. So if the atoms are vibrating, their positions are constantly changing, which means the magnetic interactions between them are changing too. Precisely. And those fluctuations in the magnetic interactions, well, they can be influenced by the terahertz light. Remember how we talked about that special 3.27 terahertz phonon? Right, the one that acts like a tiny antenna for the terahertz light? Well, when the terahertz light hits the material, it excites this particular phonon mode. And because this phonon mode is coupled to the magnetic properties, well, those excited vibrations, they end up nudging the electron spins, knocking them out of their balanced antiferromagnetic state. So it's like a chain reaction. Yeah. The light excites the phonon, the phonon nudges the spins, and that creates the magnetization. That's a great way to put it. But how long does this magnetization actually last? Is it just a fleeting thing, or can it be maintained? That's where the concept of critical slowing down becomes crucial. Remember we talked about how the material becomes super sensitive near its critical temperature, like it's teetering on the edge of a phase transition? Right. The slightest nudge can send it toppling over into a new state. Well, that sensitivity also applies to the processes that normally cause magnetization to fade away, to relax. As the system gets closer to its critical temperature, those relaxation processes slow down dramatically. So it's like the induced magnetization gets stuck in slow motion. Exactly. It takes much longer to decay back to its original state. And that is what leads to the remarkably long lifetime of the terahertz-induced magnetization. And that is why scientists are so excited. Because if you want to use this phenomenon for practical applications, you need that magnetization to last. Absolutely. And what's even more exciting is that the lifetime of the magnetization, well, it can be adjusted simply by changing the temperature, adds a whole new level of control. So it's like having a knob that lets you fine tune the magnetic behavior of the material. Mm. Okay, So we've got this long lasting magnetization induced by light. But how do scientists actually measure it? I mean, we can't see magnetism with our eyes. You're right. Magnetism is invisible to us. But scientists have developed some pretty clever techniques to detect and measure it. In this study, they used a method called time-resolved Faraday rotation. Essentially, they shine a special kind of light through the material and see how that light changes after interacting with the magnetism. So they're using light to study light's effect on magnetism. Yeah. Can you unpack that Faraday rotation thing a little more? Sure. Think of polarized light like a wave that's vibrating in only one direction. Okay, got it. Now, when this polarized light passes through a magnetic material, the magnetic field interacts with the light, and it causes the direction of that vibration to rotate. That rotation is called the Faraday effect. And the amount of rotation tells us about the strength of the magnetization. So they measure how much the light is twisted after it passes through the material, and that tells them how strong the magnetization is. Clever. Right. But they're not just measuring the strength of the magnetism, right? They're also looking at how it changes over time. Right. And that's the time resolved part of the technique. They're using ultra fast laser pulses, which allows them to take snapshots of the magnetization at incredibly short intervals. Like they can see how it evolves over time from that initial moment when the terahertz pulse hits the material to the slow relaxation process that follows. It's like watching a high speed movie of the magnetization happening in real time. Exactly. And what they see matches perfectly with their theoretical predictions. They see that rapid increase in magnetization when the terahertz pulse hits, followed by the much slower decay governed by that critical slowing down we talked about. Wow, so the theory and the experiments are lining up perfectly. It's amazing to see how these intricate pieces of the puzzle fit together. But they didn't just use Faraday rotation, right? I think you mentioned another technique, too. You have a good memory. Yeah. They also used a technique called time-resolved ellipticity. This one's a bit more complex to explain. Go for it. We love complexity here. Well, it involves looking at how the polarization of the light changes in a slightly different way. 
Instead of just rotating, the polarization can also become elliptical, meaning it gets stretched out, kind of like an oval. Okay, so it's another way to probe the interaction between light and magnetism. And by using both of these techniques, they get a more complete picture of what's going on. Exactly. It's like having two different perspectives on the same event, which helps them understand the bigger picture. And what's truly remarkable is how well these experimental results align with what the theory predicted. It's a testament to the power of combining sophisticated experimental techniques with robust theoretical frameworks to unlock the secrets of the universe. And this particular secret, this terahertz-induced magnetization, it has the potential to lead to some incredible technological breakthroughs. But we're just scratching the surface here. There's so much more to explore in this world of quantum materials. And who knows what other mind-blowing discoveries are waiting out there. Absolutely. We've only just begun to delve into the wonders of the quantum realm. So before we get too lost in the possibilities, let's take a moment to appreciate the ingenuity and perseverance that got us to this point. It's really inspiring to see how human curiosity and the relentless pursuit of knowledge can lead to such incredible breakthroughs. It is truly remarkable. But the journey isn't over. We're going to come back and explore the mind-boggling potential applications of this technology, from super-fast data storage to ultra-sensitive magnetic sensors and beyond. You won't want to miss it. Ah. All right, we're back, and we've been on this incredible journey exploring the science behind terahertz-induced magnetization. But now, let's answer the big question. What does this all mean for you? How could this discovery actually change the world? Well, the potential applications of this technology, they're truly mind-blowing. We're talking about revolutionizing everything, from how we store information to how we diagnose diseases. Let's start with something we all use every day, data storage. Our computers, our phones, the cloud, it all relies on storing vast amounts of information. And that storage, well, it's only going to become more important as we generate more and more data. Right. But the way we store data now, well, it has limitations. Think about those tiny magnetic hard drives in our computers. They store information by physically flipping tiny magnetic domains. But that process, it's getting harder and harder to speed up and to miniaturize. We're hitting a wall. So how does terahertz-induced magnetization change that? Okay, imagine this. Instead of using electrical currents to slowly flip those magnetic domains, we use ultra-fast pulses of light. That's what this discovery allows us to do. We could write data to a storage device orders of magnitude faster than what's currently possible. Wow. It's like upgrading from a horse and buggy to a spaceship. We're not just talking about incremental improvements here. We're talking about a total paradigm shift in data storage. Exactly. And it's not just about speed because light can be focused down onto incredibly small areas. We could potentially pack way more data into a smaller space. A terahertz induced magnetization could lead to storage devices with mind boggling capacities. It's incredible to think it's something we can't even see this terahertz light could unlock this whole new world of data storage possibilities. But data storage isn't the only application, right? What about magnetic sensors? Oh, that's another area that's ripe for disruption. Magnetic sensors are used everywhere, from navigation systems and security scanners to medical imaging devices and environmental monitors. They work by detecting changes in magnetic fields. And that information, what well, can tell us a lot about the world around us? But like you said, with data storage, current magnetic sensor technology has its limits. Yes, traditional magnetic sensors. Well, they can be slow and not very sensitive. But with terahertz-induced magnetization, we could create sensors that are incredibly fast and responsive. Think about it. We're exploiting the ability to manipulate magnetic properties at the atomic level yeah. at incredibly short timescales. The potential for sensitivity, it's off the charts. So what kind of real-world impact could that have? Give me some examples. Well, imagine being able to detect the tiniest magnetic signals coming from biological tissues. We could diagnose diseases much earlier and with greater accuracy. Or imagine sensors that can pick up subtle changes in the Earth's magnetic field. This could provide invaluable data for geologists studying earthquakes or for navigation systems that are accurate down to the centimeter. The possibilities are truly vast. It's amazing to think about the ripple effects this one discovery could have. It feels like we're standing on the edge of a technological revolution. It does, doesn't it? And we've only just scratched the surface of what's possible. As we continue to explore the world of quantum materials, well, we're likely to discover even more applications for terahertz-induced magnetization, applications that we haven't even imagined yet. It's exciting and a little daunting at the same time. It really underscores the power of scientific curiosity and exploration. 
Absolutely. This discovery is a testament to what can happen when we push the boundaries of knowledge, when we delve into the unknown, and when we ask bold questions. But of course, it's important to remember that we're still in the early stages. There are challenges to overcome before we see terahertz-powered devices in our everyday lives. That's right. For example, we need to develop new materials that exhibit this phenomenon at room temperature. Right now, FPS3 only works at very low temperatures which isn't practical for most applications. And we need to make terahertz technology itself more accessible and efficient. Uh -huh. But these are challenges that scientists and engineers are already tackling head on. Exactly. And with the rapid pace of technological advancement, it's only a matter of time before terahertz induced magnetization. It starts to make its mark on the world. It's a future filled with possibilities, mm -hmm. a future where data storage is lightning fast, where sensors can detect the subtlest changes in our environment and where we have a level of control over magnetism that was once unimaginable. Who knows what other breakthroughs are waiting just around the corner? That's the beauty of science, isn't it? It's a never-ending journey of discovery. And as we continue to explore, we're sure to encounter more awe-inspiring wonders that will reshape our understanding of the universe and our place within it. Well, that brings our deep dive into terahertz-induced magnetization to a close. We've covered a lot of ground today from the fundamental physics at play to the mind-boggling potential applications. It's been a fascinating journey. We hope this deep dive has sparked your curiosity and perhaps inspired you to learn more about this incredible field of research. And never stop exploring, never stop asking questions, and never lose that sense of wonder. Thank you for joining us on this adventure. Until next time.